today we are doing Art Talk Live from inside the Fiat 500X. As you can plainly see, uh, good morning, Tim. I'm a little blown out here, but it's the, it's the way the, the light is. Uh, good morning, Michael. What's up? Uh, today we're doing uh, uh, on the road, on the fly Art Talk. Uh, good morning, Greg Gill. How are you? And uh, uh, kind of excited about that. Got some things going on today. So uh, it just made sense for me to kind of get out and about. I, I can't get you guys closer than that. I, hopefully you can you can hear me okay. Uh, we're in a, uh, a park area in Malibu. Uh, you can see a little bit of trees back there. I'll show you a little bit closer here. This is um, a park over in, uh, in Malibu right now. Um, behind my house and it just made sense for me to kind of get out and do this uh, versus be in the in the studio today so anyway i got my notes over on the uh, right side hope you guys are doing okay hope you guys had a great weekend uh, i certainly had some fun uh this weekend which was kind of nice to get out and see people and and uh interact and do all the things that we're we're shunned at doing that we're not supposed to do i guess i don't who knows? Who knows? I uh, love you guys, and uh, you know I don't want too much time to go by. It was great to see you. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good to see you over the weekend. Really nice show. We're going to talk about legacy cars and coffee momentarily. But if you're new to Art Talk and you're watching this maybe on YouTube or you're joining us on uh, Facebook Live or some of the other areas that we hang out, uh, what's up, Gelman? Good to see you. Uh, um, uh, my, I'm Fireball. Yeah. And uh, uh, Art Talk is designed specifically to help you guys be creatively strong, creatively powerful, and to, uh, uh, to work your creative juices so that you can successfully bring yourself the life that you, you want as a creative being, uh, which we all are. Um, those that say that they're not creative are just people that are not cultivating creativity, but actually they are because if they are, are making dinner or if they're cleaning up their house, or if they're painting a wall or, you know, whatever they're doing there, it's a, it's all creative acts. Uh, these are, you know, we are creative beings. That's what we do. We're meant to create shit. And that's what we do. I don't have any, any signs saying get shit done. I'm just going to tell you uh, to get shit done today. So uh, our subject for today, which I kind of came up uh, for a couple of people that, uh, that approached me over the weekend and uh, uh, Brad Albrecht from Canada. What's up, Brad? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, uh, Today's subject, I, I wanted to focus a little bit on the, the fear of speaking up as a creative person, as an artist, uh, as someone that, um, that wants to create something, wants to do something fun, maybe for themselves or for others, but uh, uh, fear kind of creeps in and uh, doesn't allow them to uh, be effective. And uh, that fear can can be can manifest in a variety of ways. We're going to get into that uh, momentarily for today's art talk. Uh, uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, number one, Wheels and Waves is this coming Sunday. Very excited about that. Uh, not only do we have uh, what amounts to be a great turnout of cars, uh, unique stuff. The Country Mart is very excited about it. Uh, we are recommending that you wear your mask if you're if you're concerned uh, about uh, going to a show and contracting some personal droplets you know, from, from other people, uh, wear a mask, do some, uh, whatever is comfortable. We're not saying it's mandatory, uh, but we are recommending that you do what you feel is best for you. And, uh, uh, some of you may not wear masks and I'm not going to go in there and, and tell you, you can't come in if you're not wearing one. I, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, we all are doing the best that we can do with the situation that is, uh, surrounded around us. Uh, it's kind of like uh, that in the news uh, in Chicago, people are getting killed left and right from all the nonsense going on in Chicago. They're not going to tell you don't leave your home because you're afraid you're going to get shot. So, uh, you know, you have to do what's best for you. And uh, so we're recommending that. Uh, not only is Wheels and Waves this coming Sunday from 7 to uh, basically 10 a.m., usually say it's nine, but people stay because it's cool. It's just a freaking cool show. Uh, uh, Muscles and Mojo is after that August 2nd. We are. Um, uh, launch relaunching the museum August 1st as of right now we've gotten to go ahead to go and do that uh, Brad doing awesome later going to a cruise on the convert in the convertible as the weather is super duper we like super duper weather yes we do uh, good morning uh, Richard be safe absolutely you know everyone's you know trying to be the safe that they can uh, I am recommending uh, not to be an idiot and drive on PCH going 100 miles an hour as many people did yesterday 
Uh, we actually had a fire in Malibu. Uh, Corral Canyon, it was small. The uh, Engine 71 took care of it, so that's nice. Um, uh, yeah, be safe. It seems like common sense, right? But unfortunately, common sense is not so common. What are you going to do? Uh, there's a lot of idiots out there doing weird things. Anyway, uh, so for us, uh, we had a great time yesterday. We went to two shows down in Orange County. We went to Chris's show, Legacy Cars and Coffee. Had a, a superb, a super duper blast. That's what we had. Thanks, Brad. Uh, we had a super duper time at uh, Legacy Cars and Coffee in Tustin. That was their inaugural show. Uh, got to meet uh, Royce and uh, uh, Chris's partner. Uh, lots of, I think, fun stuff that we can do with those guys. Uh, it's the second Sunday of the month, so we'll we'll try to attend that as often as we can. It's a bit of a drive, as Chris knows, to come up to Malibu is a bit of a drive. So we'll, we're going to do what we can and, and uh, uh, help uh, uh, create some awareness. Some really beautiful cars in that show. It's definitely a hoity-toity kind of show. Uh, so we get Ferraris and they got Ferraris and Porsches and, and a 1914 Silver Ghost Rolls Royce that was probably worth a pretty penny. Got to sit in it. It was kind of cool. Didn't get to drive it. You know, I don't know if the guy would let me just, you know, tool it around the, the neighborhood, you know, in a seven to ten million dollar car something like that probably i don't know uh wasn't cheap wasn't cheap and then after that we went to quarantine cruise the, the i don't even know what it's called the uh huntington beach quarantine cruise the 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 quarantine cruise in huntington beach whatever it is i know it encompasses those four words and there was probably i would guess about a thousand cars something like that uh people kept on saying it was uh, 2,500, 3,000 cars, or, or maybe that was last, the last time. Uh, it was a lot of cars. It was a lot of cars. People had a really good time. I saw a goat and I saw, um, uh, a lot of muscle. Um, and, uh, I saw a lot of, uh, uh, really great people. Uh, so it was, we had a good time. It was, uh, something I highly recommend. Uh, it takes place right off of Beach Boulevard and, uh, some other street. So contact Ken Vella, uh, if you want to know where that show is. Uh, Wheels and Waves also, as a side note, uh, Johnny Angostino is going to be hanging out and uh, he's going to be giving out his Crystal Award of Excellence to Best of Show in at Wheels and Waves. So if you uh, if you want to uh, come and win, you think you got a car that can compete, I'm going to bring the Fiat. Not a winner. Not even close. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'm not going to bring that car. I'm going to bring another car. I think I'll bring in the Jeep Compass. I don't know. Whatever. Wayne Kendrick, thanks for uh, joining us today on Art Talk. What did you say, Brad? Uh, love your Fiat 500 bit. Unfortunately, when I sat in one, got stuck in it. <laughs> well, Brad, the, could, they could build the car bigger. Or uh, this, this is the Fiat 500X. So it's kind of like the fat Fiat. Yeah, it's the big Fiat. I'm sure you wouldn't have a problem getting in and out of this one. But the small cars, uh, the choice is to get a bigger car or maybe lose a little, you know, stop eating the, the ice cream. I don't know. You know, that's up to you. It's up to you. I know the ice cream is pretty tough to, to let go. Pete Hawk, what's up? Good to see you, Pete, over the weekend, Sydney's. Thanks for joining us. Uh, tomorrow, there will be a vlog. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do it last night. I shot everything uh, in last week's vlog in 4K. Big mistake. Took forever to process all of it. So uh, that vlog will be going up tomorrow. And then we had a press release for the Tony Dow, official Tony Dow coloring book, which comes out August 1st. Very excited about that. That's going to be bitching. I have a meeting with Tony today to go over the last few sketches of that book and we'll begin the process of putting the book together. He's doing some quotes and things that are going to go on the opposite page, some stories and things like that that go with each sketch. So that's, a, that's exciting with that. And uh, uh, that's it. So uh, uh, let's get on to today's our talk, shall we? Pep Williams is in the house. What's up, Pep? Good to see you, buddy. Uh, today we're talking about the fear of speaking up as an artist, and uh, uh, it's it's a tough thing for for many people in becoming a successful creative person. Uh, and you can be a creative person uh, as an artist, or a, as in the case of Pep, he's a photographer. Uh, what makes the difference between a successful artisan? And uh, someone that is uh, struggling, someone that's having a hard hard time, and in many cases, uh, it's the the inability to speak up because fear is present. Uh, you know, a lot of times we don't do things or we do things because we're afraid of what other people might say or what they might think. You know, what our spouses or or our um, uh, brother, sister, niece, nephew, aunt, uncle, mom, dad, all those people that that enter in and out of our lives. We're afraid of what those people think. Oh, this has got a really cool uh, lock system on this Fiat. 
Check this out. Here's the lock on the Fiat. Yeah. <laughs> Just saw that for the first time. Yeah. It's the little things that get me excited. What am I going to say? So, you know, fear is not something that uh, is easy to contend with because um, fear of uh, putting the phone up and having it not fall over. We're good. Yeah, we're good. Uh, so a lot of times the the issue with fear is that uh, what, what holds us back, uh, creatively speaking, is that we're not clear on exactly what we want. And... Uh, and if we do, if we are clear on what we want, we have a problem in asking for it or a problem in, in giving ourselves permission to have it. And in many cases, you want to go do something or you want to create something like uh, the Legacy Show, uh, Chris. Uh, many people would not attempt to do a show like that because they would be afraid that that they wouldn't find a place or that they would find a place, but somehow um, people wouldn't like it or the infinite reasons why uh, uh, excuses they give themselves to not do the things that they want. Now, I'm not one to have ever given myself a reason to not do something. You know, if something pops into my pea brain, trust me, it's about this big, uh, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to, you know, I don't care what it is. Uh, uh, if if suddenly I get a, a hankering to drive a muscle car, I'm, I'm going to go do it. I, I don't even have like a muscle car like you know, I'm driving the Fiat right now. So, but if I if I get a hankering to do something or a, to do a book, uh, the last thing I would ever say to myself is, well, what if what if somebody doesn't like it? What what if what if I uh, uh, what if I soil myself on the way there? <laughs> There's all kinds of things that you could come up with. Sorry about the light. And my half my face is glowing. I don't know if it's glowing for you guys, but I'm looking at myself right now and it's like on fire. You know, I can't really do anything about it. Wait, no, can't do anything about it. So, uh, you know, in, in identifying what you want, it's always important uh, as a successful person, as someone who's in the process of becoming successful. Because successful isn't necessarily something that you achieve. It's something you maintain, something that you uh, uh, go through the process and uh, you can be successful and then you can be, and then you can have struggle and then you can be successful again and struggle. And, you know, many very successful people have lost all their money and multiple times over. And, uh, uh, for myself, I'm the same, you know, I've, I've been gone up and down and, uh, uh, and then, but each time you go up and down, you learn a few things and you resolve and you get yourself to the point where you, uh, uh, you have less times where it's down and more times where it's up. And, uh, you realize that part of that process is a, not about you. It's about what you're doing for other people and, uh, creating businesses that expand and enhance people's lives in some way. And uh, Elon Musk was even quoted as saying that it's not important to come up with something to change the world. It's important to come up with something that just uh, makes people's lives better in some way. And uh, that could be uh, uh, opening a restaurant. Uh, it could be, you know, a lot of creative processes that are that. But if fear is keeping you from being able to achieve those things, then you have to understand that uh, above and beyond being clear on what it is that you want um, you have to understand, is what you want helping people? Most people are reactionary. They're not uh, proactive. And the difference is simply that they wait for something to happen before they respond and do something about it. Uh, and then proactive people are people that get ideas and then they run with them and they don't hesitate and there's no uh, procrastination. There's no time delay between getting the idea and moving on it. And it's very important that if you want to be successful as a creative person, you have to condense that time. You have to, you have to go from the initial impetus of the idea, the formation of that, that inspiration that you get. And the time you begin to take action on that inspiration, you got to condense that time to where there is no time. It has to be immediate. It has to, have to work. You know, and many people, they get an idea. It's like, oh, I want to make chocolate pigs, you know? Uh, and then they, they say things like, um, I, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Then who am I going to sell it to? Who wants a chocolate pig? You know, uh, they come up with a thousand reasons why they wouldn't do it. And, and, you know, people made chocolate cows before. They made chocolate aardvarks. They made all kinds of chocolate animals. What the hell am I going to do with a chocolate pig? Right? Um, what they don't realize is that the formation of that idea, where did that come from? Where does inspiration come from? Uh, uh, when people say, I got an idea. The truth is, they did not get an idea. They received an idea. And then it brings up the question, where did I, they receive the idea from? 
Now, that's important to ponder. It's very, and very important to, to think about these things because when you begin to think from a much higher level, as and ask, begin to ask yourself the question, where do ideas really come from? Where does inspiration come from? Then you begin to ponder that question and get answers. And the answers are that ideas come from one source. Now, that one source, unfortunately, has multiple names, lots of names. And, and, and it can be a name that you, whatever you want to get it, give it. But the source is something that's all powerful. It's everywhere. It's uh, omniscient. It's all knowing. Uh, and uh, you can call it God if you want. You can call it um, a 1969 muscle car. You can call it my hat or your hat. You can call it your, uh, your brother's, sister's, wife's, uncle's, cousin's dog. You know, whatever it is that you want to call it. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you acknowledge that it's there. And then when the idea pops into your head, you're given a gift. And you have to understand that gifts are not meant to be squandered. Gifts are given. And what helps expand them is gratitude and thanks for those gifts. So when we begin to see that that an idea formulates and comes into your mind uh, as a creative person, and uh, you consider that to be a gift, then you, you, you look at that from a different vantage point, from a different perspective, and you begin to... Um, implement those ideas because you're meant to run with that gift. And that's very important to, to ponder. Make sense? Well said, an inspiring way to start the week off. Valerie, boom, going to see you this weekend. Uh, Pep, I hope you're going to be there at at uh, Wheels and Waves also. Michael Malia, um, uh, funny headrests. Yeah, they're like solid. It's like a target. That's what I would do is I would stitch a target right there, you know, for your head. You know, um, Michael, I don't think you're going to be coming to Wilson Waves from Australia, but it'd be a hell of a drive. You know, could be cool. Um, let's see. What else we got? Um, when ideas formulate, uh, you know, and you and we begin to judge them, uh, you have to be, be careful that, you know, that the, the world is in a, um, a very critical nature right now. And it's hard for people to not... Uh, uh, if you're wearing a mask, you get criticized because you're uh, paranoid, you know, and you're uh, uh, you're kind of a kook. You don't wear a mask, then you get criticized and you're selfish, and you're because you're not wearing a mask, and you could you could uh, you know hurt somebody. You get criticized for wearing black shirts because that's all you ever wear. You get criticized for wearing white shirts because they get dirty. Uh, we get criticized for driving a Fiat as opposed to a uh, muscle car. Ford guys criticize the Chevy guys. Chevy guys criticize the Mopars and the Mopars criticize the Morris Miners. Whatever. You know, uh, it's very, very, very easy to do to criticize others for not uh, stepping up to where you think your the standard should be. Uh, so I'm going to implore with you guys to uh, to think about that and to try to figure out a way to work today from a non-critical nature and from an expanding nature, what can you give to someone else today that will help them? Uh, I don't know why this light's going on my phone. Sorry, you guys can't see that, but my light's going up and down. It's a little bit better. I don't know. It's weird. Hope you guys can still see me. Um, so uh, instead of, of being uh, critical today, let's figure out a way to help uh, people expand and deal with, with uh, what's going on in the world and maybe to create something that might... Uh, might be better, might, might help them. And that, that simply could be that you, you make a dish and then you share it online and say, Hey, you guys try this, you know, uh, uh, let's, let's figure out a way to stop being critical about the way people are doing things, uh, being critical of our presidents or our vice presidents or our, uh, you know, and not everybody agrees with what's going on. And I understand that, but criticizing Unless you're going to get out of your car and you're going to drive over to the White House, knock on the door and make some kind of difference, there isn't a lot you can do in the world order. But there is something you can do for your life in dealing with things. And criticizing what's going on uh, isn't helping. But certainly what can help your life, your micro universe, is the way you conduct your life. Um, uh, there's lots of people making mistakes and there's lots of people doing good out there. Uh, but uh, the people that are making mistakes don't need to be told they're making a mistake because that doesn't help them. You know, they're on their own journey. 
You know, unless you can give a phone call to somebody and uh, help them in some way, uh, we help, have to help the people that we can. That's why we do Art Talk. That's why we try to, um, you know, uh, give people uh, tools tips and tricks that, that will help them become uh, creatively powerful for today. So we want to think this stuff through before we speak. Uh, and, and generally people that are reactionary just blurt. You know, they see something they don't like and they blurt. B-L-U-R-T. I don't even know if that's an official word, but I'm going to use it. And it's, it's a very effective word that tells you you can't go out there and just blurt crap. You know, think about it. Think about what you're going to say. Think about the consequences of your words, the consequences of your actions, the consequences of your criticism. If you knew for sure, 100%, if you knew that if you criticize someone else, you will be criticized. If you knew that, and that was a guarantee, and that was a clear thought for you, you would think twice about criticizing. So it's important. You get what you give, right? So if you give good, cool stuff out there, you become a custodian of cool, real custodian of cool. I'm not talking about fake ones. I'm not talking about Sunday custodians of cool. I'm talking about every day, every day. You get out there and being a custodian of cool is putting something into the world that expands and enhances people's lives in some way. You have an opportunity to do that. So the next time an idea comes to you and you're faced with the, the fear of whether someone might like it or not, try to shift away from being concerned about what other people think and start thinking about how this is going to give something of value to people and how you can you can get out there. Uh, critical, judgmental people suck. Well, you know, I, I understand that, Don. Uh, the thing about that is we want to make sure that we're not criticizing those people that criticize. Uh, and that's it's, it's very easy to do. And it's very tough to get out of that cycle. So uh, the big challenge is uh, to do what, you know, it said in the Bible, to do what Jesus said is to turn the other cheek. And now this is not, I'm not, not a religious thing. This is a very simple, practical thing is that don't give your attention to things that suck. Don't, don't give your attention to people that criticize. You know, when someone criticizes you, someone does something wacko, uh, put your attention on something else, something that, that is uh, going to be of value. Uh, Johnny just rolled into the house. What's up, John? Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is Art Talk. Uh, we're doing it from the, from the Fiat here in Malibu. Uh, Johnny's going to be giving out the Crystal Award of Excellence at Wheels and Waves on Sunday. Going to be awesome. Uh, I don't even know what it looks like. I saw a little bit of picture of it, but I think it's going to be cool. Best of show. You could have best of show. I want to bring the Fiat. Johnny, you're not going to give this car anything. Anything, but I'll probably park it in the back. Actually, I got to keep remembering, I'm not even bringing this car. I got another car I'm bringing, but you definitely aren't going to, that car's not going to win either. You know, um, I got a bunch of crap to bring, so it's just going to be a car that, with a bunch of shit in the back. So um, emotion can cloud judgment. You know, and uh, when we get highly emotionized, high, highly charged, uh, we say things that we don't mean to say. We do things that we don't mean to do. Uh, we have to think uh, calmly and clearly. So confidence and clarity and time equals success. Confidence, real confidence, not fake confidence, not the baloney bullshitters of the world. There's a lot of people that talk out of their ass, talk about things that they have, you know, can't do, you know, because they're, they're, uh, they want to make sure that people think they're important, you know. So we want to talk from a place of confidence. And that can be scary sometimes. It can be scary, to be honest. It can be scary to be truthful. Um, uh, and, uh, and you're taking a chance. Because once again, that fear comes up. And like, what are people going to say when they find out that, that I'm, uh, um, I'm gay? I'm not. But, but if, if someone were, you know. Uh, or if I'm into goats. <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from. Uh, you know, but whatever it is, whatever it is, uh, if we can figure out a way to not be fearful, to move forward, to be with real confidence, but clarity is important. Clarity, uh, uh, what it is that we want and how that helps others. And then time, uh, just because there is a, um, panic on someone else's part for an answer does not constitute a panic on your part. I didn't come up with that, that somebody said that somewhere and I bastardized it somehow. But that's really what it is. Okay, so practice today. Uh, you know, try try to find somebody that you need to speak up to, somebody that is uh, uh, a little bugger in your side, uh, someone you need to have a discussion with, right? 
But before you do, it doesn't mean you have to do it today, um, but get some clarity. Get some clarity on what it is that you want and how you can help that person as opposed to criticizing them in some way. Uh, and uh, that process, you'll be amazed, will uh, expand and enhance your life in a really great way. Okay. Ken Rotai, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining me on today's Art Talk. Um, Right. As a reminder, we got Wheels and Waves uh, this Sunday. Hope you'll join us. Johnny's going to be there. What does it say here? Cheers from Oroville. See you Sunday, July 19th. Malibu Wheels and Waves car show. Boom! Going to be fun uh, once again. Uh, you don't have to have a car. You can bring a motorcycle in. You can walk if you want. You know, just come hang out. We will have free Hot Wheels for, uh, uh, for as long as they last. And we will have 65 Malibu Sunset Coloring Books, brand new, just came out. We'll have 65 books coming out, uh, courtesy of Paul Grisanti, who's writing for Malibu City Council, soon to be mayor, Mayor Grisanti. That's going to be fun. I get to call the mayor my friend. That's going to be so fun. Root beer in the drinking fountains. Just saying, just saying. All right, people, have a spectacular day today. It's Monday. Implement this stuff. It's actually good that we're only doing our talk once a week because I want you guys to practice on this one idea all week long. Stop the criticism. Start giving out love. Become a custodian of cool. You know you can do it. I have faith in you guys. We'll see you soon. <laughs>